financial performance of the Craftsman Automation Limited for the quarter in nine months ended 31st December 2023. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the opening remarks is concluded. Should you need assistance during this conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Ravi, uh, Mr. Srinivasan Ravi, Chairman and Managing Director of Craftsman Automation Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome to the investor call today. Thank you very much for joining. I'll just give a brief note on the market, the addressable market of Craftsman Automation. In the powertrain business, we had only a marginal increase in the demand because of the adjustments that are happening, which I'll explain later uh, during the Q&A. Whereas on the uh, aluminum segment, we had um, good growth on the two-wheeler side. In spite of uh, our uh, passenger vehicle business not um, reaching to the level with certain customers where we had orders and even from others, not picking up material, but still we have had a healthy growth in the aluminum product segment. Uh, standalone as well as in the consolidated. The tractor market has uh, declined and I think the Red Sea conflict is posing a lot of challenges uh, going forward. I'll just uh, put some numbers there on the consolidated financials and we'll go to the standalone. On a nine month um, comparison, the turnover has been 3,300 crore. Previous year is not strictly comparable because the DR action consolidation has not happened. It was 2,200 crore. So EBITDA also will not be comparable to 684 versus 593. EBITDA also not comparable 479 versus um, 342. Please. Financial ratios, debt equity has been 0.86, debt to EBITDA 1.59 because we are always saying that 1.5, 1.6 is a comfortable level. EBITDA margins has been around 20, EBITDA margins 14, it's for the nine month numbers, PAT has been 8. ROC pre-tax has been 23%, ROE is analyzed as 23%, EPS not analyzed has been 114. Standalone financial uh, highlights, nothing great to speak of, but I think there is, we have done reasonably very well with the headwinds. The turnover uh, has been increased from 2,385 crore to, the, to, to from 2,185 crore. The breakup for this is, has been the powder in business has been 1,169 aluminum six and industrial engineering 551. EBIT has been 503 crore with marginal increase over the uh, previous year of 499. And um, the breakup of the EBITDA has been, power train has been 333, aluminum parts 127 and industrial engineering has been uh, 68 crore. The storage division has a turnover of 261 versus 271 the previous year, a marginal decrease. There has been a lot of headwinds there on the, uh, the shrinking market this year. The market has shrunk. In spite of that, we are able to almost retain the top line in spite of uh, stiff competition. CapEx of, uh, until December 23 has been 390 crore. This is uh, all round um, capacity balancing, expansion, marginal capability increase to address the uh, new opportunities which we expect in the near future. Now I want to touch upon the two new plants. One is the Kodavari plant, which we had um, uh, informed you in the last meeting. The plant we started the construction activity, and it is in line with our timeline what we have planned. We have declared 24 to 36 months for the startup production, but we are trying to fast track it in a slightly better pace. This will house all the three segments of the business and even the uh, proposed cast iron foundry which we are putting up will be for industrial engineering to start with and it will also move into the powertrain segment on the heavier uh, uh, castings which are coming forward. So the other segments will follow into this um, location because our current um, land availability and capacity, of the, land availability and space availability in the current plant is quite limited. The second uh, major um, shift towards the growth opportunities we are taking is we have uh, identified that NCR region is a way to go forward with a lot of uh, potential being there in the market for all the three segments of the business. So again, we are making a composite unit in the 
vicinity of the NCR region, which is uh, within 100 kilometers of the major customers in the auto sector, as well as uh, the storage solutions also will uh, will see a reduction in uh, freight and logistics cost, which is um, good when we are running out of capacity at a power plant in the near future. So also on the um, power train segment, um, we are on only on this facility at a Faradabad plant. Any new opportunity which comes up also, this new uh, location will address to. So to start with, we are looking at aluminum as the new, uh, the first phase of the business. And uh, we propose to invest 150 crore in land building and machinery in phase number one. We are looking at uh, sales of um, mature sales in the first financial year after commissioning of the plant to be around 200 crore in this. Now with this, I will leave the floor open for Q and A. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Jinesh Gandhi from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, Ravisa, can you share uh, uh, the uh, value add uh, details for the quarter or for the nine months, like you share normally? Yes, uh, for the value add, the number for The power train for the December government. I'm now talking about the you want the Q3 or you want the nine months number? Uh, third quarter. Okay. Third quarter. 237 on the power train, 97 on the aluminium, and 73 on the industrial energy. Okay. Uh, and secondly, uh, you, you were referring to the issues which we are facing in the power train business where volumes or other revenue growth was quite weak. Uh, uh, so what are those issues which we are referring to and how do you see growth in the power chain business going forward? Uh, first, I would like to say that there are no issues in the power train business. This is, an, um, we have grown from a smaller base to a very high base at a very high trajectory going forward. You know that in the passenger vehicle segment, there has been a lull in new development of products. It's a confusion of EV which is there. Farm sector has been muted for a long time, and the BSX transition on the commercial vehicle segment has just taken place, and we don't see any new development or new um, production line coming in. The other challenge, I would say, is has been only on the trim 5, which is the equivalent of for the emission norms for the construction equipment and tractor, which is supposed to come in from April this year. We already invested for those lines. These are some of the parts are very new. It is not the existing engine getting upgraded. But I think as expected, the government has um, uh, deferred this uh, timeline because of the huge cost, cost impact, uh, especially the farm segment people, and also the construction equipment. So we do not know when it's coming up uh, on this matter. Being a single supplier for any customers, we already have invested in line with our agreements because this business is not going to go anyway, anywhere, but uh, we have already concluded with the customer and uh, we are ready for production as and when the things. So it is something we are transitioning to is Today on the commercial vehicle um, segment, uh, we had a um, reasonable growth, but I think there is some action in the market. And uh, looking forward to the election year, there will be reduction in volume, um, especially in the construction side. And there will be maybe a flat uh, situation in the uh, commercial vehicle segment uh, going forward in the next year. So having since that little uh, time back, we have um, improved our capability. We have increased our capacity by 10%. We also have refurbished our old equipment, which are more than 15 years old, to bring it into order, even though they're fully depreciated. So we have spent uh, quite some amount of money. And even the machines, which are 10 or 11 years old, we have brought it to full speed. So with this sort of capability, we have uh, 
and capacity which is now latent capacity which is unutilized is quite high totally with that we need not need any further big investment going forward while we continue to focus on the other two segments of the business mainly the aluminum segment and the in the beginning and we are moving to the industrial segment which i will explain later with the opportunity which is coming up with the uh, geopolitical situation and also the government um, uh, push towards uh, manufacturing within india for all, all the multinationals our inquiry and footfall within the company has been quite high going forward so we know what is coming so we are getting prepared for that got it and uh, secondly on the brazil uh, order of daimler uh, how how's, how are things there now uh, have you seen uh, impact of inventory correction being largely behind us now or the continued pressure uh, uh, on that business the inventory correction is still in the process but i think uh, there is nothing much on the inventory correction further but the market itself is um, there also is shifting to shifting to heavy duty just like in india so the medium duty segment where we are addressing is not going to grow that is clear even as the economy of brazil comes back we have factored that in so the way we are looking at power train is as i mentioned in the last running call we are looking out at how highway and the industry engines the india will become a big hub in the near future because apart from um, China, there is no other manufacturing country in a big way. This, um, uh, this casting and machining business. So there we are. Uh, uh, a part of the investment is going for uh, for that particular segment of the business in our corner market. Uh, got it. Thanks. I'll come back in two. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhishek from Dollar Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for opportunity, sir. Sir, uh, you are setting plant in Delhi and CR. So, uh, can you please uh, throw some light on the who are the key clients in that particular for that particular plants? As of today, the clients whom we are discussing are, um, I think, we have um, progressed quite a bit. There are uh, at least uh, two clients we have progressed a bit, and we have another two clients we are in the initial stage of discussion. The question comes up: Have we got a plant in Nigeria? They have also connected us for the some of the critical parts, which um, of a um, little more complex nature, which they ask us to supply from the Coimbatore plant as well as our Bangalore plant. But having said that, only doing the niche uh, projects, products, and things like that will not help us to grow our business nor um, improve our profitability in the long run. So we have asked them that why don't they give us bread and butter business also? So that is under discussion, but there is. um chicken or egg story now whether the plant is available or not so as a part of our commitment we already have um, one bit in the auction in the rajasthan uh, industrial land and we have got uh, the land allocated the allocation letter is expected to be done this week with that i think uh, we will be able to uh, conclude this month in the near future with customers because there are no new capacities which has come up in the ncr region and one more important point is ncr region has been the one of the oldest uh, industrial area uh, for a long time so whatever investments have been made by um, our fellow comp- uh, and peer companies in that region are also pretty old and um, some of them have moved on to higher technologies and things like that so there is a good possibility for craftsman being as an agile manufacturer that quick development good machining strength so the outsourcing in uh, some of the regions are still is interest and uh, talking about uh, still casting aluminum casting are being procured and machined in now we have seen that change in the southern region where outsourcing of the machining also has happened this trend will also be quite visible uh, in 2 3 years time in the ncr region i think the confidence has to be in the supplier where they can uh, meet the exacting standards of quality as well as um, consistent delivery and also meet the cost targets In fact, uh, our earlier foray into two-wheeler business was uh, the um, niche area. Of course, one of our customers, other customer, was importing the crankcase from China, where we replaced them. So we have proved that uh, we are able to manage this business quite well. And um, with capacity utilization coming up, um, uh, we are able to get a, a d- decent return of ROC in spite of being only eight or nine years into the business. So, new, uh, uh, so the new plant uh, mainly be utilized for the passenger vehicle, two wheeler, uh, two wheeler aluminium business, or in a power train business. Uh, in aluminium, we are not restricting ourselves to um, any customer base in that way. We are now talking about with the acquisition of DR Action. It is quite clear that our passenger vehicle business is higher than the two wheeler business as of today, totally. And um, 
uh, earlier it was predominantly hypersensitive casting before the question now it is uh, more towards gravity and um, uh, low pressure which is uh, predominant now is a bigger percentage followed by hypersensitive casting so we are a well balanced company and we are looking at all the three processes across the uh, both the passenger vehicle as well as the two wheeler segment okay sir and and this quarter sir uh, there is a sharp contraction in the ebit margin of industrial segment so despite the, the this happened despite the lower steel prices so what is the reason sir the story solution business has shrunk in the first nine months and um, for the whole year also it will be lesser than the market size i'm talking about and compared to last year the investment into warehouses has uh, taken um, a pause i would say in spite of that we are uh, we have made the absolute sales almost same i think 98% of the nine month figure year on year or 95% is what we achieved our um, peers in the business have uh, performed lower than that and there is there is also some consolidation which is happening in the market so when the declining market segment there has been tremendous price pressure for the getting the available orders so that is the reason for the reason for the contraction in volume when the market comes back in uh, 526 which we are very sure i think when everybody has got their um, uh, pie of uh, business i think the margins um, will improve sharply because of the uh, both because of the capacity utilization and better price realizations okay sir and this uh, new off highway business uh, uh, revenue will also kicking from fy26 only yes say fy26 onwards uh, it will uh, fy26 also will be a small portion the development time is i mean the the capacity to come up is 12 months 14 months 20 months it is from the time of the installation of the equipment we have informed the stock is in 24 months to 36 months so we are trying to cut down the impact of the challenges what we have apart from this uh, we have to say that uh, the development of the parts uh, we are taking a parallel action where it is also tournaments uh, for the tooling everything to be developed and then it comes to the validation of these projects because of the highly nature cost nature of the end product running at a few crores of rupees per product the testing cost also runs into uh, it is millions of dollars per product and it on the assessment it was 6 months to 1 year before the validation happens so these are difficult to get business uh, not easy to get and also very very sticky business going forward uh, because of the huge investment uh, which is being made by the customer also in, in terms of validation testing and the tooling cost totally so so we are on the right track on that matter we already have secured um, in some cases machining orders for these particular parts and these castings are coming from outside india today so we are very clear on that uh, particular uh, business aspect the second uh, we are not looking at only the powder and business in our new facilities in kotawadi we are also looking at um, the uh, new government uh, regulations which is related to bis and also the trend towards manufacturing within india totally going forward so the uh, it is a very clear sign that we are doing missing also the windmill parts in the windmill means i'm not talking about the structural parts for the windmill but more critical parts for the gearbox housings we have been in the missing field we invested heavily in the industry in the segment in over a period of 3 4 years in phases of course so that is significant per year but now we are ready and we have thrown the parts and now we are looking at back integration into the casting front our customers are open and uh, we are very close to negotiating and getting in an LOA in the next uh, uh, few months i think it is uh, it is also quite a, quite a sizable order so that will be the new facility will be doing both the industrial segment for the end segment of uh, windmill and also other capital goods also are requiring castings uh, which is also part of industrial industrial engineering and the power train business for the i think anywhere starting from 15 liter engine all the way to say 90 liter engine all these particular engines have to be developed in india because uh, there is not enough facilities uh, or castings within india thank you sir that's all for my side thank you ladies and gentlemen in order for the management to be able to address questions from all the participants in the conference please limit your questions to two per participant should you have a follow up question we request you rejoin the queue The next question is from the line of Pranay Roop Chatterjee from Burman Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, am I audible? Yes, Mr. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, my 
first question was with regard to the power and revenue. So, a uh, couple of questions have already been answered on that. So, I'll ask it slightly differently. So, uh, your key segments like Daimler, as you said, is uh, down 40-50%. Uh, still not recovered, and MHCV volumes will probably grow uh, low to make single digit, I think, next next year. Uh, Ashok Leyland is already declining, I think, in the last couple of months. Uh, and tractor also, it's probably like zero, around zero percent only, right? Uh, along with that, uh, you are getting new orders in off hybrid segment, uh, which is, uh, like you said, expected to kick in FY2016 onwards, right? Uh, in this context of uh, slowing end segment uh, over the last three quarters and new revenue kicking in in FI26, uh, is it fair to say that FI25, which is the next four to five quarters, should be uh, pretty much flat for power trends, like probably flat, flattish to mid single digit growth? Uh, we'll be able to uh, always, as usual, little out to the market. But I would say that um, the, the customer uh, case will be flat. We have already got for the other SUV manufacturer who was importing from Italy for the leading models um, of the Indian uh, SUV manufacturer and also the Italian manufacturer that share engines. The cylinder blocks were imported and now Craftsman has started the supplies in the last month uh, onwards, which was getting imported for the last, at least as far as I know, six to seven years now. So there is an import substitution, it's not a market growth that is there. And as I mentioned on the uh, industry engine side, it is not only about the casting which is uh, yet to be developed at Craftsman on this matter. It is a machining side which already we got orders. The castings are coming um, anywhere from even from uh, South America. These are being shipped to India. We have already started the samples. That will start kicking in revenues in H2 of next year. The top line revenue, because it's only a mission value, might not be insignificant, uh, but I think uh, the traction is on. By the time uh, with the confidence level, with the our own facility coming in, I think there is a lot of confidence in the customer to move, not move, at least to, to um, look at stopping imports in view of the BA standards and requirements, and also to look at the uh, opportunity to de-risk themselves from the China market overall. So it's also end market remaining flat uh, and historically also, also you have outperformed the end market uh, because of various initiatives. So that should probably result in like 5, 6, 7 percent probably uh, at most right? for the next four quarters till you uh, till it kicks into a higher growth after that. After that we are expecting a very high uh, uh, double, and surely, surely a double digit growth and it will go to the old growth rate by 27 is what we have predicted because that will still change. This is some um, Movement from uh, industry engines we are currently less than 10% of our total portfolio. Uh, just like uh, in the aluminium business, um, passenger vehicle was negligible, suddenly so passenger vehicle has taken a bigger uh, role. In spite of our one of our uh, European customer challenges, you know the order book which I had mentioned initially after the IPO, which is um, uh, now uh, almost three years old, it has not really taken off. The 200 crore order, then we downsized 200 crore, now it is at 30, 40 crore because of the headwinds faced by the customer regarding other things, not regarding the supply of craftsmen which we will not like to elaborate in this earning call. So in spite of all that, I think we've grown. So we will be looking at uh, using our industry engineering knowledge where um, we have grown for industry knowledge to power in the automotive business. So that is helping us in the small volume, medium volume industry engineering uh, sort of activity in the powertrain business for the uh, off-highway vehicles as well as for the station engines. Uh, my second question is on your uh, aluminum product business, which uh, combined with uh, your exam obviously is a very well balanced uh, business mix today uh, with a 2200 uh, annual average, right? Uh, on this base, uh, and I am recalling all the past calls and pre dear exam when we were managing this segment and you are consistently maintained 20% growth as it is, right? So now yes. on this 2200 crore base, uh, do you think there is enough fuel in the tank to sustain that high level of growth at 20%? Uh, what are your thoughts on this for the next three years? If you look at it, it will be high teams in the uh, financial year FI um, 25, if not 20%. But I think with the new facility coming up in the north um, and for FI um, 20. 
uh, surely we will be at uh, 20 percent on the higher base. As for the revenue of 200 crores you said for the plant, is that the peak revenue or just the first year revenue which would ramp up to the peak? It is the first full year of revenue uh, provided the plant op starts operation six months in advance because there is a validation and things like that. But it's not a long validation like the other parts. Yes. Got it. So, so what is the peak at uh, terms? Peak, we can look at uh, 300 crores. 300. Okay. Okay. So thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Senthil Kumar from Joint Ray Capital Services Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Am I audible, sir? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, in view of the expansion plans, you know, the greenfield and brownfield expansion, uh, the growing debt on books. Uh, uh, are there any plans to raise equity to pay up high cost debt? Uh, we, uh, we are comfortable, very comfortable at uh, one level and we are at 1.6 level overall on the uh, debt to EBITDA because we don't look at debt to equity at all because it's the cash generation versus the debt. So really speaking, if we slow down CapEx or we are looking at um, any activity, automatically it will come to debt one is to one. Raising equity will be a dilution of the EPS, which we are not very keen, but we will have an enabling resolution uh, surely in the near future where we are looking at uh, further uh, m and within the country. Now uh, there is a small step, little change in our attitude towards um, m &A outside the country, also uh, outside the country. You may ask why for the two decades you have resisted from that, suddenly what is the change? Now we see the winds of change coming in where the multinationals are going to set up plant here. So it may help that we are getting the actual supplier who's supplying in um, Europe uh, to um, uh, to service them within India. First it will be from imports from there and then we may be setting up here. So that will ensure that we have the technology, we have lesser risk going forward. We are not uh, putting the both eggs in one basket, that is the European subject. So for that, these reasons, we may have to raise capital, but not for smaller questions, no. Our idea is not to raise capital. And I think um, debt servicing is a cheaper option for in uh, taking the interest of our shareholders. Oh, okay, so I understand that. And my second question is, again considering the expansion plan, uh, is it the conscious, the conscious decision of a management to concentrate more on aluminium products than the traditional automotive uh, powertrain segment? If so, why? Uh, you have uh, asked uh, quite a um, very interesting question, I would say. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at uh, the powertrain business, uh, the headroom for doing on the industrial engine side is pretty high. So, we have already set foot there. We are watching this for 10 years and we made the move last year, totally. Now, on the aluminum segment, um, looking at it, the so called light weighting or the Aluminum content for vehicle increasing has really not happened so far because of the huge confusion which has been there on new platforms, how to go. But as expected, uh, after long um, dwell time, the OEMs are looking at um, having a platform which has been will be common for IC engines, hybrid engines, then um, plug-in hybrid, as well as total EVs. So this is the way going forward so that they have the scale which is there. Only then it's worthwhile for them to invest for an aluminum platform. So unless we have the technologies in place and size, I may have mentioned in my earlier earnings call that we are looking at the global scale of operations on aluminum. The minimum size of the top 10 people has been $1 billion to anywhere between $1 billion to $3, $4 billion. So at least we are aspiring to at least be 500 million in a, in a place of two, three years' time, at least. So then only we will have the required R&D and we will require the development, interesting scale for the customer. And in uh, also in view of some projects taking off or some projects failing in the market to, for the customer point of view, still we will be able to sustain the uh, growth as well as the, uh, we'll protect our margins because we will not, um, uh, per customer or per, uh, per segment, our exposure will be lesser. So this is the way we are looking at aluminum. Aluminum is still the growing segment as far as it's concerned. Earlier, aluminum, I mentioned that it has 
predominantly two wheeler still it's predominantly two wheeler but i think in three two three years time it is set to change okay sir thank you i'll join the please thank you i request to all the participants that please use your handset mode to ask a question the next question is from the line of joseph george from iifl please go ahead uh thank you for the opportunity so uh, my question uh, is in relation to the expectations that you have in terms of growth for fy25 so for powertrain you said that the end industry is likely to be flattish in terms of volume so should we be looking at a single digit kind of a growth for yourself including the you know benefit of the new orders etc yes uh, you should be looking at a um, high single digit i would say but uh, yes uh, single digit on the aluminium i will answer your question and then answer to you before you ask the question on a consolidated basis uh, we are looking at um, anywhere uh, high teens to 20% under sector and on industrial and engineering you mentioned that storage solutions is unlikely to see much of a growth in fy25 because of the industry situation so that would mean that even on an overall basis uh, industrial and engineering wouldn't see much of a growth in this area Uh, it will be because the base is very small. You can still expect a fifteen percent growth. Yeah. Understood. And lastly, sir, for industrial engineering, within industrial engineering, can you give us the uh, story solutions revenue for the quarter, please, third quarter? I think the number is two sixty versus two seventy in the nine months figure, and that will be quarter two. Yeah. Uh, I will uh, talk about uh, the story solutions now. It has been um, for. Q3 of FI 23 was 80 crore, and uh, for uh, Q3 of FI 24 was 90 crore. Understood, sir. Thank you. That's all I had. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rajesh Kothari from Alpha Square Financial Advisors. Please go ahead. Go ahead. Hey, hi, this is uh, Rajesh Kothari here uh, from Alpha Equity Advisors. Uh, just one question from my side. In terms of the profitability. particularly on the aluminum side uh, on the core you know without the consolidation excluding dr exion how should you you know how we should look at it from this year and the next year onwards as long as we keep growing yes so that we, we are going to keep growing we are growing at 15 20% i think we can be there preserving this margin there is some increase in all operational costs that is what has impacted our power train and um, drawing your attention back to power train when the salaries are increasing when the operation costs are increasing and when the top line doesn't grow i think there will be uh, the cost reduction possibilities are uh, quite limited because we are already a well run organization but in a quiet company we have uh, better chance of cost reduction and come back to that later so in the yes in the aluminum segment with this growth category i think we should be able to preserve the uh, margins in quarter margins were not good am i right i mean if i look at even current quarter again it is decline i'm talking about a core stand alone aluminum business that margins have again you know reduced so it's always a uh, quarter post the festive season where all the products have been uh, stocked and we have uh, increased our capacity to that level so overall it will be uh, in that uh, situation uh, year on year it will be in the same situation so for the i'm looking at the year on year So next year, are, are you saying that next year we should look at you know about what the 16, 17 percent kind of a margin, excluding the DR exon? I think we are operating uh, between 16 to 18 percent uh, EBITDA margin as I mentioned earlier, and we'll continue to operate at that level uh, going forward. So. I mean, powertrain. You mentioned that you know the industrial side of the it is a new driver. What you are looking for. So can you just give some uh, you know more insight into this because uh, you know this basically may drive your growth in the future. But you know for by this opportunity, how big this can be the this can be three over next two two three years. I will draw your attention to a top three four five companies in the world just for an idea. Their presence in India is. Um, Um, not so big in the terms of uh, industrial engines they are big players there in the construction equipment uh, the multinational companies from um, uh, from uh, north america as well as in japan who are into huge construction equipment as though many many names they are anywhere between 40 billion 50 billion dollar in revenue but their engine operations are only 2 billion and their china operations are very big so now they have started to focus on in india and we will see that uh, it will be their plants which will be beefed up or even new plants coming up in the near future which will serve the not only in india growth in the indian market but in the neighboring regions as well 
because um, the uh, Chinese uh, joint venture companies or even China owned companies will be at a given point will be restricted to within China itself because of the uh, other geopolitical dynamics. I see. I see. So, you know, for this, do you need to make any fresh investment, the capex? Uh, that is what we had mentioned in the missing side. We have been uh, very uh, carefully investing for the last three, four years in small portions in the industry segment on the large parts missioning. Uh, that is, um, large parts, I mean, tons, parts weighing 10 tons, which are the, some of the engines and some of the industrial engineering equipments also are weighing that big, very critical missioning. Then we are also... Um, are setting up the Kodavadi facility uh, to target uh, those sort of uh, businesses because we need the castings for that. I mentioned earlier, without the castings, the machining alone cannot grow. And this segment, there are no uh, suppliers in the country. Uh, uh, I think one or two are there, but I think uh, they are also not scaling up to the global level. Yes. Supplier for what? They are not there? Sorry, I didn't get it. Oh, for the larger parts. I mean, larger parts on the industry engines, there are only a few suppliers in India, in you know, nowhere with, uh, in relation with China. So I'm talking about, uh, as I mentioned, um, I don't know whether you joined late, but I said um, engines from 15 liter to say even 100 to 120 liters have to be manufactured in India for various reasons. It may be for the backup power generation, it may be for um, also for um, construction equipment, which are large, uh, large in nature. So this is uh, for domestic market as well as export market. So this... Uh, Opportunity is still unexplored by the Indian suppliers. That is where we are looking at. It is the same casting machining of the uh, power train, which is being extended with the industrial engineering machining knowledge. Because in the current power train, our parts are weighing 150 kilos, 200 kilos, 250 kilos. Nothing more than that. Now we are talking about um, real heavy parts. So it means value addition possibility can be higher? Sir, I think uh, this is a very difficult um, question to answer because if the large part is there, the value addition in percentage of the material cost may be uh, smaller, but the value addition to, compared to the work done may be very high. So I will not be able to exactly correlate that. It is not an apple to apple comparison. Understood. Just last question, my side. What is the full year capex for FI24 and FI25? FI24, uh, we are looking at the region of around 500, uh, 500 crores. And FI25? The FI25 will depend on how we are going to look at the, the uh, North plant to be able to conclude any orders and before uh, June and a big, big uh, level. We may fast track the project, which we have declared 24 to 36 months. Now only the land investment has been... Uh, I, again, it's partial. It is only installments we have to pay the land. It is over 12 quarters we have to pay for the land. Mm -hmm. So there's no big cash cash outflow. But once you start the construction and we start installing equipment, there will be capex. But that will be decided by the board um, at a time when we have some evidence on the particular um, investment. And uh, industrial and engineering, uh, how do you see the margins? For industrial and engineering segment, how do you see the margins? Yes, sir, I think uh, I request you to come back in the queue because sure. uh, oh, well. I mentioned that we had a we had Thank you. The next question is from the line of Basudev Banerjee from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks sir, for the opportunity. Last quarter uh, call, I remember uh, you mentioned that because of some machinery refurbishment in your uh, factory uh, for powertrain business, uh, the margin was coming down and it came to 20% and the work is more or less done, so it should recover back soon. So this quarter we see powertrain segment margin further down. So what is the status from that uh, machinery refurbishment angle and uh, when should we see powertrain segment margin recovering back or on the ground what you said last night? Thanks. Uh, I will answer the question holistically, first the specific question and then the holistic uh, answer. Our grass block in the power train is uh, very high and um, we have been investing from 2004 onwards in the, uh, when we look at uh, the grass block of um, 2,000 crore, so we took this opportunity to refurbish to higher capability or to look at um, enhancing the productivity of the mission by some changes on the equipment. 
or to avoid uh, too much further capex. I would say 70 percent of it is done. Balance 25, 30 percent will be done in Q4 and uh, partially in Q1, but that will not be significant going forward. I think then it will be normalized to a level of uh, actually the uh, repair and maintenance. So second point uh, which um, uh, look at uh, holistically on the entire uh, investment and the uh, margins are affected by fundamentally three to four major points. I will list them out. One is surely capacity utilization, number one, because of the fixed cost which is sitting there and um, the missioning is not done, there is something like airline seats going empty. This is one aspect. Second aspect, we are having inflation of the manpower cost, which is uh, cannot be passed on. So that means we need to also invest for some automation or productivity improvement to nullify the uh, manpower cost. Uh, the third thing is about the existing products uh, coming down on the market and needing some changes. We need to be agile to manage the capacity utilization overall. These are the three major um, drivers for the uh, profitability. You may notice that um, for the uh, the depreciation is uh, increased by around 11 crore. Okay. If you look at uh, Apple to Apple year on year basis on a standalone basis, you will see that 9 crore is coming from um, power train business that increase radically. And the 1 crore. Sure, sir. To be corrected. Okay. See, it may not be available in your domain, but I would say that uh, the bulk of the depreciation increase has come from the power train area. Totally. That means we are, we are ready for the next phase of growth. So it is very difficult to manage growth when the opportunity arises when we are not ready. So this is a small price to pay uh, at the, this stage when we have the time and energy to do it. And uh, we will be able to address the growing market from if I this onwards. Thanks, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jinesh Gandhi from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, a couple of questions. One is on the cast iron foundry. So had we finalized the uh, specification for that and what kind of investment that could be required? It has been announced that the Kodavari project will be a composite plant for aluminium for the uh, industrial engineering as well as for the power train. So this is a total 50 acre campus which is equivalent to the current campus, totally. Our current campus in Coimbatore houses all the three uh, divisions of that. Similarly, that will house, that will house this uh, uh, foundry also. So this would be what, uh, a 5,000 ton foundry? Pardon? I didn't hear you properly. Uh, what would be the size of foundry? It is around 2,000 ton capacity, but this is not the green sand foundry what you may be looking at. This is the parts weighing from tons onwards only. It will be multiple sub-tons. 1 ton, 5 tons, 10 tons, something like this. Each part. Okay. Okay. Got it. Close. Typically, in the uh, powertrain business, it will be 150, 200 close which I mentioned earlier. So it, we are not only looking at the powertrain, we are looking at the wind energy, we are looking at capital goods. This is the foundry which will address the two segments of the business. That is the powertrain as well as the industry design. Got it, got it. And uh, secondly, uh, 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 when we look at the exports, uh, so uh, what, what would have been the exports in this quarter? Uh, I think we will uh, wait for it offline because in the interest of time. So yes. there's nothing much has changed on the exports. Okay, but broadly speaking, the uh, exports have been uh, related to the under pressure uh, for last uh, couple of quarters or so, like for other industries. Uh, I'm right on that. Uh, I think uh, there is some um, uh, 161 crore to 165 crore or 4 crore, which is mostly driven by uh, the... Uh, I'm talking about direct exports. This is mainly by exchange rate. So actually there's been no growth for that. It is very clear because all the countries are going through election now. They are going through election phase this year. I think a lot of stop correction is happening. Uh, so we are uh, also had the Israel conflict happening. Now the Ukraine conflict is not over. Now we have the Red Sea problem. So I don't expect, but I think tire two exports, um, other than the um, uh, Brazil dollar export, all of the tire two exports have improved. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, got it. Uh, great. I'll uh, come back in two. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vaishnavi Deshmukh from Yashvi Securities Private Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, Ms. Deshmukh, your line is unmuted. Please ask your question. Hi. Uh, so I wanted to ask the question regarding the margins of industrial and engineering division. So last quarter we have seen that it has improved. But uh, in this quarter again, it it, it plunged down to six point uh, around six point nine EBIT levels. Uh, why is the re what is the reason behind this decline? The margins are not uh, declined directly. If you look at it, I think the capacity inflation has come down. There has been evidence on the uh, storage solution business where it has been really competitive because of the shrinking market. We have grown the we have kept the number of flat. I would say we have achieved ninety five percent of the storage solution business in spite of the big contraction, double digit contraction in the uh, more than double digit. I would say high team uh, contraction in that particular segment of the business. So to keep our market share going up, I think we have sacrificed the margins. I think this is a temporary phase, so that's what uh, we are uh, strategically looking at uh, to uh, improve our uh, position in the market. Okay, so when are we expecting these margins to improve? Like within uh, next year or in FI26? And what are the margin targets that uh, we can achieve? Holistically, let me answer for FI26. In between, uh, there can be uh, an election year, there can be other uh, possibilities. Looking at capital goods is required in the country, no choice. Uh, coming to global policies, very conducive for manufacturing. Very, very conducive, going for setting up plants. All the states are competing for uh, setting up new plants, attracting investment. So this is in the focus employment generation and uh, uh, domestic uh, reduction of import and increase of export. So having this in mind, we are hardly manufacturing 10% of what China is manufacturing. Okay. This means we are too small in the global context. So when we are going for a small base and we are making bigger investments, it is something like a small boat rocking. So the capex uh, which you are doing on the industrial engineering will... Uh, immediately depress the margins because that's the depreciation hit. So once we raised even aluminium, the same problem we had four years ago when our base was small, we were quarter on quarter, there were big uh, changes. But now since we have reached at least a small economic size, we have not reached an economic size at around 50 million, I'm sorry, 2,500 of course. So I think uh, it is still um, uh, okay to uh, manage investment. So I think the industry investment phase for the next two years. After that, I think our margins will creep up just like the only margins improved. Okay. So which, uh, I just, last question, which of this uh, particular division, like storage solution and other divisions, industrial energy, which is uh, generating more margins, like uh, comparatively, which have better margins? No, the margins means I would uh, shift to ROC and the storage solution is not capex oriented. Whereas our mm -hmm. contract manufacturing is capex oriented totally. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. look at uh, similar ROCs uh, will be there across the segments. And the entire business model is slightly different from uh, all these three. We expect multinationals, we are driving a lot of footfalls of multinationals for contract manufacturing of their products for the Indian market as well as for the export market. This after a lull of uh, practically 20 years, we were 80% um, export company craftsmen, direct exporters, I'm talking about, not direct export. In 2004, we had 83% of our revenues to be exact from direct exports. 70% revenue was coming from India. We are supplying to 34 customers in nine countries. After that, it was a China story. But now, it is starting to come back, that is a footfall. Uh, for example, you have seen the some of the Taiwan manufacturers, the very big companies setting up facility for manufacturing phones, in Azur region, which was imported. So these will have, these are their own or their own plants. But in the cost of capital goods, I don't expect the multinationals to have an end-to-end -end solution for manufacturing in the country. They need suppliers like Raftsman to supply. Okay, so that will give us the growth that we are targeting, like 15%. Yes, I think in the back of the mind, we need to understand still that we are at 10% of China's manufacturing manufacturing output. 
Yes, sir. Sure. Thank you. I'll come back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. That will be the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Srinivasan Ravi for closing comments. Uh, thank you very much for this interesting session. Uh, that's why I closed the opening remarks within seven eight minutes to leave uh, more uh, time for the Q and A. And uh, today the winds of change are blowing in India's direction. Uh, the all the global manufacturing companies are looking at India to scale up. There's a lot of confidence in Indian manufacturing, which after a long time is, uh, I mean, uh, is being looked into. And uh, there's a confidence that the government policies will be continued for enable a conducive um, environment for manufacturing. So this requires that change. The only compliant I keep hearing from customers, there's no fear in the country. They're disappointed. They still have to go back to China. So that is what we as craftsmen also wanted to change. We want to be part of the growth story, but we are not taking the time to take any one major step which will uh, uh, and uh, maybe take uh, lead into a risk situation. So we are monitoring the situation very clearly and moving in small steps in the right direction. And as I mentioned uh, earlier, for the first time, we are not only looking at m and within the country, maybe small or medium size, not large size, of course, uh, within the country and even outside the country where it makes a strategic sense, where the risk is very, very small or negligible to even bother about it, where it gives a strategic advantage to have a foothold in the uh, global market trend. So with these uh, remarks, um, I would um, thank all the investors who have been on the call and I look forward to the meeting again soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. On behalf of Craftsman Automation Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.